Lawmakers questioning former Attorney General Loretta Lynch for about seven hours yesterday in a closed-door session. Democrats calling the interview a waste of time and slamming the Republican colleagues for rehashing what they consider old news. The Attorney General has given tremendous service to our country. Our Republican friends want to rehash issues that have already been resolved. It was reiterated by her that she saw no reason uh, today, based upon all that was reviewed and presented regarding former Secretary Clinton's emails, to prosecute or to hold her criminally liable. It was a total waste of time. We were simply rehashing uh, uh, things that have been gone, that have been gone over in public many times before. Joining me now, Republican Congressman Daryl Issa of California, who sits on the Judiciary and Oversight Committees. Thank you very much. I know it's been a very busy week uh, for you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Well, thank you. And, and I just want to start off by when people get to see the transcript, what they're going to see is Republicans a asking important questions, questions that, quite frankly, she, on she answered pretty straightforward. And then they're going to hear Democrats talking sort of almost like a social chit chat about what were her opinions on unrelated matters. So let's talk about about three hours of interview, not seven. OK, so, I mean, Democrats are calling it old news. Uh, it you know, it is. Republicans it is old something news. new yesterday, did they? Julia, it is old news. It's old news, but it still has not been put to rest. Right. Comey was insubordinate. Comey did not inform the attorney general, who had not recused herself, that he was about to dismiss a case uh, for lack of evidence when, in fact, he wasn't a prosecutor, but rather an FBI uh, head. He did a lot of things that justify his firing. And ultimately, one of the greatest questions that had to be resolved was, was FBI Director Comey fired for good and valid reason? And I think we put to rest in, in no uncertain terms that he was, that he was appropriately fired by the chief executive for his ongoing insubordination, his attitude. And that's, that's separate from uh, his efforts to, uh, to try to undermine the presidency before Donald Trump was elected and right afterwards with his deceit, his, his actions toward Flynn, all kinds of other things, ultimately... The firing of, of Comey, of Jim Comey, James Comey, was correct and appropriate. And we put that to rest yesterday with the mm -hmm. help of the attorney general. Now, both the judiciary and oversight, uh, they're jointly examining allegations of bias. And that is a big sticking point for Republicans and one that Democrats might not understand because this is not old news. This just happened, I mean, uh, just about a year ago. And, and specifically, I'm referring to, of course, the former AG's controversial tarmac meeting with the former president, right. uh, Bill Clinton, at a time when his wife, the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, just happened to be under investigation. Uh, Comey, I thought it was interesting, we read in the transcript, called the meeting a coincidence. Uh, how did Lynch explain it? And I, judging by your face, do not believe you think it was any coincidence. You know, it's 140 degrees out on the tarmac. It, you, you don't even want to keep these jets out there with people in them. Uh, it, the reality was, it was, it's a long way from one side to the other. Uh, President Clinton had to basically stalk the attorney general, set it up so that this coincidence would happen. And then he not only had private uh, conversations with the attorney general, who was about to move out of her position and want somebody of influence to help her in her future life, but he also privately and separately talked to members of her staff. And we still don't know what was said there. But the same was true. These people were about to go out of office and having the president of the United States and a man, former president and a man who controlled half a billion dollars of charity assets and global reach, you better believe he had influence far beyond that of the average citizen talking about chit chat and children. Right. He had influence that affected the decision of whether his wife was prosecuted for what, for what was clearly wrong. We can debate prosecution, but there's no question she failed to, to obey the law mm -hmm. and he was in there intervening for her. All right. Switching gears just a bit because we have so much to talk about. Uh, the president's sure. pick for AG, um, William Barr, uh, getting more criticism from the left. Uh, I'll do it to a memo uh, to the Justice Department where Barr apparently said that uh, and called the obstruction of justice inquiry by the special counsel, quote, fatally misconceived. Uh, do those comments present a, a conflict of interest or is this more of the left picking on yet another uh, Trump pick? 
Well, first of all, this is somebody who, even for the moment he was announced, they had to agree, was incredibly qualified and had no question about his previous service. Uh, but he can, be, he can have an opinion that happens to be right. Uh, the fact is, it was fatally flawed. The, the reality is that what we're learning is that there is a weak and unjustified case to prosecute the president for obstruction for firing Comey. Just the opposite, there's yeah. good and valid reason for the firing of the FBI director. And those are real questions, mm -hmm. but just because he has a view on it, doesn't change the fact that he's very qualified and, in fact, he's right. All right, Congressman Darrell Issa, great to see you. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. this. Joining us now, Congressman Matt Gates. He's a member of the House Judiciary and Armed Services Committee, and it is great to have you with us. Uh, Congressman, let's start with uh, the oversight and judiciary hearing uh, with uh, Loretta Lynch. I know you can't tell us much, uh, but uh, you have a way of uh, putting things that uh, is uh, illuminating. With that setup, you should uh, <laughs> you should do great. What well, do you think? Lou, I, I think that it's a total joke that here we are just with days left in the Republican control of the Congress, and just now we're getting to Jim Comey and Loretta Lynch. Sometimes in Washington, the game you're watching is not actually the game that's being played. And right now, the game that's actually being played is one of keep away. They're trying to keep Rod Rosenstein away from our questioning while we still have the power to get answers. And the reason is because if we had Rosenstein before us instead of Loretta Lynch and Jim Comey, we would ask him which members of the cabinet he was conspiring with to remove the president of the United States. Who was he talking uh, with about potentially wearing a wire on the president? Mm -hmm. I want to know the answer to that. Can you believe, Lou, that it has been months since we learned that from the lawyer of the FBI, and yet we still haven't asked Rosenstein those questions under oath? You know, at this point, Congressman, I've got to be straightforward with you as you, uh, uh, as you are with me. Uh, you know, I, I am not surprised that this is, uh, we've watched the clock get run out by the Dems successfully because the leadership of the House of Representatives is in the pocket of I don't know who, but in the pockets of so many, and I have to believe they have uh, at least offices near K Street. Uh, this speaker of yours has been a total joke, and you guys put up with him and even let him resign and then keep his job for eight months. I, I don't know what to say. I, I fear sometimes that you know, we did not have the support we really needed to execute on our oversight over the FBI and Department of Justice. So now what's going to happen, Lou, is that the Democrats are going to get control and they're going to show us what real robust oversight looks like. They are going to use every tool in the toolbox to try to disrupt this president from executing on border security or spending cuts or any of the reforms that we need in this government. And so, you know, it, it, it's it's so hard to kind of tolerate this environment in which we like what we're fed, like Jim Comey bite by bite and Loretta Lynch when Devin Nunes gave us a list of 42 names months ago. And we never really took that seriously. Right. And so I, I think that in the new Congress, we're going to have to use different tools in the minority to make sure that we give this president the defense that he deserves, because these are phony charges. And if we continue to just kind of play the Washington game of politeness and allow the, the FBI and Department of Justice to slow roll their responses to our questions, then we never really get the truth for the American people. And that's one reason people hate Congress so much, because we sometimes confuse motion and and progress. There's a whole lot of motion, like yeah. today with Loretta Lynch, but not nearly enough progress. Well, I think that's well put, and I think uh, the American people, by the way, really aren't that confused by what they're witnessing in the Congress and the Senate of the United States. Uh, they're watching. Uh, people are getting very little done. You wonder, given all the investigations, the hearings, and all of the, the nonsense that's come to absolutely nothing, uh, I'm amazed at the low ratings, the tragically low ratings, uh, approval ratings of Congress and the Senate are as high as they are. I, I mean, it has been a devastating two years for the Republican Party. It has. And now we've got to pivot and use a different set of tools as we move into the minority in the House. And I fear that there's not going to be a real effort to legislate. It's going to be careening from one government spending brink to another. And all the Democrats are going to use their time for is to try to embarrass and distract yeah. the administration from the work on trade that you've highlighted on the show, the deregulation agenda, all yeah. the things that have created the fastest wage growth I've, in a decade. I've, I've got a thought. And I, I 
I know that you and Congressman Jordan, Congressman Meadows, uh, all of you are uh, in the Freedom Caucus working very hard for this president. But remember these words because I think this president has got a very good sense of what they mean. Uh, and it, they were words uttered by President Obama, you'll recall. With that pen and that phone, he means to move ahead. Uh, he has enormous power that he's about to remind everybody in the Democratic as well as Republican Party uh, he possesses. I, I just think, uh, you know, I don't see why he would wait on anybody in the, uh, on Capitol Hill ever again to get something done. I, I, the frustration has got to be immense. Uh, you get the final word here, Congressman. Well, we've got a spending vote coming up, Lou, and I'm going to be supporting the amendments of Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan right. to actually get border security and wall funding into this deal. The fact that we would wave the white flag of surrender and think that we're going to get a better deal when Nancy Pelosi is speaker is just the type of, 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 uh, of bad energy that I think the Republicans have brought to the border security debate. I think we need yep. to be a lot more aggressive. You're the man to do it. Good, good to have you with us, Congressman Matt Gates.